Hey everybody, it's Scott Costa, publisher of TED Magazine, another video podcast. You can also be listening to us. We appreciate you joining us on the Distributed with TED Magazine podcast. Had a great conversation with Brian Rooney. He's a past 30 under 35 winner. He's the vice president at Callis Kingsley, which is a manufacturer's rep that's based in Chicago. He, just so you know, is an Iowa State guy. I am Kansas Jayhawk, so we talked a little bit about sports. We talked about kind of the things he's runs the role for me as kind of my reporter in the field. He's been out there, you know, doing stuff. And so we talk about kind of the economic outlook and how things are looking for him, things that are happening right now. We talked a lot about succession planning because, you know, there've been a lot of key people in the supply chain who have retired over the past few months. And it's, it's led to so much transition and so many things that are going on that we just really wanted to get into kind of where he sees the changeover as you know, millennials are kind of taking on more leadership role, kind of how he sees that role happening, how the transition is going, uh, what people should be doing, obviously, to begin that plan to make sure that they have the right people who are ready to be in place uh, when re these retirements are happening. So we had a, a really great conversation, a, a, a strong podcast. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Before we dive in, though, I do have to tell you about the NAD Market Data Program. The program is a service where electrical distributors submit confidential, anonymous, monthly point of data sales. Users are then able to see market values by region, product, or customer type. Users are only able to see the aggregated market data when there is enough data in the system to maintain an anonymity. That's a big one. Also, another huge thing, the market data program recently began displaying its first state data for Illinois, North Carolina, and Virginia, and more data is expected soon as more distributors continue to dis make their data available to you. If you have questions, there is a place to go, nad.org slash market hyphen data to get all the information you need about the market data program. Now let's join the podcast with Brian Rooney. Ryan Rooney, our, our reporter from the field for TED Magazine, the guy who comes through for us uh, up in the Chicago area, tells us what's going on. Past 30 under 35 award winner. Um, and I, oh, wait, an Iowa State guy. Hold on a second. Sorry, Brian. That's okay. Oh, bad. I love to see it. Love <laughs> to see it. Coming at you live from Chicago, IL, um, yeah. best city in the world. Couldn't be happier to be here. Love the, uh, the poster on the wall there, Scott. Thanks for showing a little love. I think that's Soldier Field, if I'm not mistaken. Soldier so. Field and my Kansas Jayhawk now, you know. Oh, well, you know, we could have we could have done without that one, but um, like to see the Big Twelve love at least. Yes, exactly, exactly. So tell me again. You, I joke, but you've been on the podcast before because we we kind of dubbed you a reporter in the field for me, telling us what's going on out there. And you've been on the road a little bit. You've been you've been traveling. You've been meeting with some manufacturers. You've been you know obviously talking to some distributors. Tell me you know give me an idea. What's the landscape like out there? What, I'm stuck in my office, so tell me what you're what you're seeing. You know a lot a lot still hasn't changed here in Chicago. Um, we got a lot of distributors and and contractors and kind of everybody that is not really allowing third parties in the office. Um, it's still very similar to how it's been for the last few months. There's some good business out there to be had. Um, a, a lot of opportunity right now that we seem to be chasing. Backlogs could be stronger, um, but generally, you know, business is moving along. But unfortunately, there's still a lot of um, reservation around coronavirus. Um, I've even heard of some distributors not bringing employees back at 100% capacity in, in, into the next year. So I think kind of what we're dealing with right now with COVID-19, at least in, in Illinois and Wisconsin, um, will probably run at a minimum into 2021, if not further. Right, right. And you're, and Kallis King, you're Vice President of Kallis, Kallis Kingsley. You represent Illinois, Wisconsin, some Indiana, is that correct? Yep, so we're, we're the northern half of Illinois, the eastern half of Wisconsin, and then Northwest Indiana, and then also the UP of Michigan. So um, we represent 15 manufacturers in total. Uh, we are a 35 year NEMA rep. So generally the uh, electrical lines, some commodities, but we also, you know, represent some lighting lines as well. So um, we kind of run the full gamut and service a lot of distribution in that area. So you've, you've talked to some manufacturers recently. I know we, we talked before the podcast, you know, weeks ago about you doing some traveling and talking to manufacturers. Uh, you know, how are they doing? Are they able to, you know, meet the demand, meet what's going on right now? Are they you know, are they, are they hearing any concerns? Kind of what's the, what's the lay of the land in terms of the manufacturing side? Well, you know, it, up until a couple of weeks ago, I would have told you that it was going pretty well given the circumstances with coronavirus. But 
um, as everyone says, this seems to be the last season of, of Planet Earth on Netflix or something because the hits keep coming. You know, we COVID-19, then we had, um, you know, the, the, the big storms come through Iowa and Western Illinois, and I believe it's Hurricane Laura that just hit down in, in um, you know, Texas and Louisiana and the southern half of Arkansas there. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it seems like just when we're about to get ahead, something else hits. So I know there's been some folks out there that have been struggling as a result of that. Um, there's been some other issues with, with getting raw materials for certain electrical products um, that have been a little bit of a problem. I know the manufacturers and distributors and everyone alike is doing everything they can to stay, you know, ahead of it, but there's certainly some obstacles we're still all working through. Are you getting any contractor feedback? What are they saying, uh, you know, in terms of, every, I, mean, I, I hope they're understanding. I mean, everybody's going way out of their way. Whether you're a manufacturer or distributor, you're trying to get products to these contractors as fast as you can. I'm sure that the contractors are trying to be understanding, but are you getting any feedback from them? Uh, you know, what are you hearing on the contractor side? Well, yesterday's never soon enough for a contractor, right? That's kind of uh, that, that's kind of how it goes, and we get that. You know, these these construction jobs have deadlines; they need to get things done in in a suitable amount of time. But it really does seem like, you know, generally everybody understands what's going on here, and the key to that is the communication from the manufacturers, distributors, et cetera, that you're getting way out ahead of that. So there's really no surprises um, for the customer base, so they do know what to expect. Um, it seems like as long as you're, we've been communicating those things effectively, there, there's there been some pretty good understanding out in the marketplace. Yeah, yeah. And wait, I won't hold you to it, so don't worry about this part. But yeah, so what are you seeing moving ahead over the rest of this calendar year, you know, and into the beginning of 2021? I mean, what are you, I, what are you looking at? I think it's hard, it's hard to tell. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm far from an um, infectious disease expert, but... I have to think that this is going to take a vaccine or some sort of incredibly effective treatment um, for the country generally to kind of come back, um, to come back to quote unquote normal. Um, you know, so I have to think we have to have something like that to really get going. And then on top of that, in order to get those effective treatments or vaccines deployed um, to the general public, I think we'll take some time as well. So I don't know how long that takes. I wish I did, but I would have to expect that um, kind of the, the business climate that we're in now, I have to expect will last at, at least into 2021, um, potentially, potentially into Q2, Q3. I hope not, but, you know, you never know. I, th I think, you know, kind of what we're doing is, you know, plan for the worst, hope for the best, just like everything else, um, and kind of take it from there. We're hearing a lot of down 10%. You know, some are nine, some are 11, some are 12, some are eight, but give or take the, the average is around, at least the folks that I've talked to, we're around 10%. And, and it'll, like, to your point, I think if, you know, a vaccine comes along, I think we're, we are going to look at that, what they call that V or, you know, V-shaped rebound. It'll be interesting to see kind of where that comes across. So, you know, I appreciate it. Again, I'm not going to hold you to it, but I appreciate yep. giving us a little bit of, you know, kind of where you see, where you see the, the market or where you see the, the economy going, at least in our and our supply chain. And, and I think, I think 10% is accurate. And, and just, we were talking before this, before this call, Scott, that, um, you know what, it's, it's, um, at, at least we're not in the position in some of these other industries. We are a, you know, we're, we're, we're an industry that has to stay open. Um, you know, many, many states have really allowed us to operate at close to an optimal level. And, uh, to be honest with you, I think being down 10% as an industry is, is sort of a collective win. Um, you know, if, if we were in the restaurant industry or the hospitality industry, uh, we would be, t you know, singing a very different tune. Yeah, they're, they're really, they're fighting it. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. So, okay, so let's dive into topic number two here that we wanted to get into. And we talked, uh, again, we, we talked about coming back on because this, we've seen a lot of uh, retirements in the supply chain over the past couple of months. Significant people, important people who've, who've again, you want to talk about pandemics and weathering storms. These guys have you know, led the supply chain through, you know, massive economic downturn in 2008. And, um, you know, again, threats from Amazon and big box stores, I can go on and on. So these are smart people who, who you know, done a lot. And then, you know, the summer of 2020 was kind of been the summer of retirement. Uh, a lot of, a lot of key people have said, I'm out, you know, so, uh, and, 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 
taking you back a little bit, taking everybody back a little bit, anybody who attended an NAAD regional, you know, over the past year, George Warwick is the, was the chair of NAAD and still works closely with all of us. You know, he gave his speech and he started him off by saying, you know, I have a problem. You know, most of my executive team is going to be retiring in the next few years. So it's coming, you know, and, and we've written in the magazine and, you know, because you're a 30 under 35 a millennial. We've been writing in the magazine for years. Hey, you know what? The millennials are coming. You know, by 2023, it'll be 75 percent of the workforce. Well, guess what? 2023 is coming up. And, and it's not just now a part of the workforce. It's leading the workforce. These people are going to take on key roles now and they got to jump right in. So what are you, you know, what are you seeing on that? Are, are, you know, are, are you feeling the effects of sort of the turnover toward the next generation and those who have succession plans versus those that don't? What, what how are you viewing that one? I certainly definitely see it. Um, and there, you've already seen some turnover uh, kind of in the marketplace. There's been some acquisitions of, of even regional distributors in our area. Um, you know, from, from folks that maybe were or weren't involved in those companies that have kind of come in. Um, you know, I look at myself with Cal's Kingsley Electrical Sales. Uh, my partner, Dave Alonzo, and I are, are um, acquiring that business from the, the founding principals, Jim Kingsley and George Callis. And um, it's, it's something that we put in place a very long time ago, and it's a very long process. And I, it, I think it takes that long for everyone to kind of get involved, get comfortable, make sure all the stakeholders are, are okay with what's happening and are feeling good about it. Um, I definitely have seen more retirements and more people moving on since coronavirus because, you know, like you said, I think sometimes if people have put themselves in good enough positions, maybe to ride off into the sunset, mm -hmm. it's maybe now is a good time because it, frankly, it's a lot of stuff they're having to deal with that are so uncertain and, and, and hard to handle, very akin to the 0809 stuff. I don't think it's as bad as that, but it, I certainly think it's close. And um, the good thing that I've been seeing is a lot of companies have done a good job of, of promoting from within, training people inside their own organizations. And a lot of leaders have done a good job of trying to find those people to succeed them. Um, that said, that takes quite a bit of time. And it's something that you really have to get out in front of and plan for. Um, and I think there have been some instances where people haven't planned for them, whether that be you know, industry organizations or companies or whatever it may be. Um, if you don't plan for these things and you don't execute on them, you really can't put yourself behind the eight ball. What works for you? Well, you know, just in terms of, hey, you know what, someday down the road, you know, and congratulations, getting the opportunity to, to acquire Calix, Cal's Kingsley, by the way. But Thank you. Somebody, Thank you. Somewhere down the road, you're going to want to turn it over to the next person. Or you're going to, you know, some, what, what works for you just in terms of starting the planning? Getting things going. What, what do you recommend? Yeah, so I'll, I guess I'll talk to this in kind of my specific experiences. I've been involved in succession planning with with a larger distributor in the past um, as an employee, and now I've been involved in succession planning um, as, as a future owner of of a of a large rep agency in the Midwest. And um, you know, kind of when I look at that, it's it's something where you really you really have to kind of take a step back when you when you develop your, your business plan generally, you need to take a step back and you need to understand what's your exit strategy from the get go. You know, I'm, I'm in i I'm in my early thirties and I plan to do this for a very long time, but you better believe in my business plan. I have an exit strategy. Um, that exit strategy may not come into play for 35 or 40 years, but it's still there. And it's something that I'm not necessarily acting on right now. And I may not be acting on in the deck in a decade or two to come, but it's in the back of my mind. Um, and it's something that everybody should be thinking about and be prepared to act on when the time comes, because these processes of, of getting people trained and getting good people acclimated and, you know, getting your employees and all your different stakeholders comfortable with those people takes a very long time. And it's something that I can't stress enough. It's going to take way more time than you could ever possibly imagine. Um, years upon years, you have to think as leaders, you have to think yourself, how long did it take you to, to acquire those skills and knowledge that you have right now today? If you're CEO of ABC Electric, how long did it take you to get to where you are right now? And you need to think that the person that's going to come after you is going to take the exact same amount of time, if not longer. So that's kind of how I approach it from a really high level. I could get into more specifics, but that's, that's kind of from the high level. From the get-go, you have to be thinking about this. Right, right. I appreciate it. And I hope you're around for 35 years just because I need – 
I like hanging out. And talking. <laughs> I hope so too. I appreciate it. Yeah. They, won't be, they won't let you stay in the, you know, in the, in the young electrical perfection professionals club that you're in in Chicago. Yeah. But, yeah. But that's okay. So, but I, you know, I think another question related to that is, is, you know, I, there's a lot of folks, you know, including me who, who don't embrace a whole lot of change, you know, because the way things, when they're the same, they feel pretty comfortable. But you have to, there's been a lot of, you have to embrace the change. And there's been a lot of, talking about a lot of change just over the past five months, been crazy. Do you feel like, you know what, if you're going to make this many changes and there's going to be dozens, if not hundreds more over the next few years, you might as well change people too. I mean, do you think we're kind of at that point or do you think we need some mix of established people and new people all kind of working together to try and ease our way through this massive change. I mean, I, I feel like the customer and the pandemic have really kind of forced our hands into change. So you might as well wash all the clothes at one time instead of in part, I guess is the best way of putting it. What, what are your thoughts on it? Well, so, you know, I, I think it's, it's one of those things where you have to, number one thing is you have to think about all the stakeholders involved in, in, a, in, a, in a transition like this. You have employees, you have strategic partners, and you have customers. And I would probably argue, you know, number one are your employees you need to look out for first and foremost. But most people in our industry or related industries are sales professionals and, and you know, the customers rule the roost. You really need to make sure that you're taking care of your current customer base. Um, you know, a good example is it's, it, it, there, there's a lot of studies out there. It's six times harder to find a new customer than to retain a current customer. Um, things only become more and more difficult if you lose business and you lose a client base. And that's the number one thing that you need to think about when you're going through this process. And when you have people stepping into leadership roles, you really need to make sure that they have the soft skills and the hard skills to be able to retain that client base. And then, you know, obviously add moving forward. And, that's the, that's the number one thing that you need to think about. We can't just transition into somebody that you think is great because, you know, they're a great person and you like them. You really need to evaluate this holistically uh, on a very high organizational level and then also really drill down to, okay, are they going to be able to help retain my business, grow my business and improve my business over the years? Because otherwise, you know, you've just put somebody into, into a position to, to fail, frankly. Great point. I think it's an excellent point. I appreciate you bringing that part up. But, you know, again, you're a 30 under 35. You, you're on the road a lot. You probably talk to a lot of people that are your age. It's not like we're, you know, handing the, handing the keys to the Maserati over to a 15-year-old with a learner's permit. I That's mean, true. There's a lot of young, really smart people out there. So I think, I've, I mean, I think a lot of people, you know, forget when a lot of these leaders probably got, maybe got their first big, let's call it their first big shot, you know, when they got their first opportunity to run an organization or anything like that. I think when, when you drill really back on it, you know, it, a lot of these people that are 30 under 35 winners have, you know, five, seven, 10 years in the business. Right. That's not, that's not a small amount of time. That's a, that's a very good amount of experience. Um, and I think people tend to forget that, you know, just because we're a little bit more of a, um, how should I say, uh, mature industry, um, you know, they, they forget the fact that a lot of these quote unquote, quote unquote, younger folks do have a lot of experience and they have, you know, had a lot of really great responsibility over in the past that they can, you know, that your organizations can draw from. And I think when you put those people in the big, bigger positions, many times, as long as you've done the background work, you know, making sure that they have the hard skills, they understand the job, all the stakeholders are, are happy with what's going on and bought into the process they'll really surprise you with what they can do for their business because they'll also bring skills and perspectives to the table that maybe you haven't thought about before in the past. So project me forward a little bit. Not, in fact, don't project me forward a little bit. Project me forward a decade. You know, yeah. where are we in 2030? Uh, you know, you're now, you're not eligible to be a 30 under 35 anymore. Sorry, Brian, but you already won. So it doesn't matter. But, you know, where are we? What do we look like? What do we feel like? What, you know, who are our leaders and what are the personality traits that they have to have? And, and, you know, where do you kind of see us, you know, how are we stocking and delivering stuff? What, what, do, you, what do you see in our future, uh, you know, as we move ahead? I think the biggest thing that you're going to see is you're going to see leaders that can sell value um, and, and can understand how, how businesses are run 
um, top to bottom. Um, I think it's somebody who's going to be able to help, you know, their partners make good decisions, um, can give different insights, people that are strong with data, um, understanding how data affects their business and how data can affect decisions that they're going to need to make moving forward. Um, I, I think there's going to be even more value added services that are going to come into play over the next 10 years that probably aren't even around right now. Um, that, that I have no idea about, you know, I, th I think all these things are going to come into play in the next 10 years. And I th it, things will look different. Um, you know, obviously technology will improve. We'll have different sorts of value added services, different sorts of product coming into the marketplace. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, relationships are going to, are, are going to be paramount. Number one, going to need somebody that can have strong relationships with people internally and externally. Um, and you're going to need people that understand the business and, and can help make good decisions. I agree. It's interesting because, you know, I agree with you. I think it's, it's going to evolve. I think that the number of the amount of data that, that is going to be available. I think we have a lot of data today. Wait till 10 years from now. I think it's, going to be crazy. It's, it's going to be unbelievable. A lot of these, a lot of these businesses that are, are doing building automation or, you know, different things like that are going to, are, are, it's, Frankly, their business models are, may change as well, though. I, and this is me really kind of getting conspiracy theorists on you. But I think, um, I think a lot of the, for certain businesses, they're going to find a lot of opportunity um, selling data and selling different types of products that are not your traditional hardware offerings. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's definitely going to come into play and in then maybe in the next 10, 15 years. Um, but at the end of the day, Everybody needs electricity. Um, the lights got to stay on. And I think a lot of the product and, and things that we're doing now will still be around. I agree with that. Yeah, that's a great point too. I, I, I attended a couple of conferences where people were talking about projecting forward uh, pre-pandemic, uh, you know, projecting more, where should we be, you know, in 2030? And a lot of those things we needed to have, you know, in, in September of 2020, forget about 10 years from now. So it's amazing how we had to ramp those things up. And it really makes me curious to see where we go, you know, 10 years from now as, as the ramping up continues and, and what we end up uh, as, a, as a supply chain. So it's going to be, it's going to be really interesting. So uh, absolutely, it, it should be fun. Listen, thanks for coming on. You know, I always appreciate talking to you. And just a reminder, you know, the Big 12 is playing football this year. And so that means Iowa State and my Jayhawks are going to be meeting at some point, um, you know, and, and I'm assuming you're going to just work us, but that's okay. I'll accept that. I can't, can't wait. Can't wait. We, 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 we have trouble with you guys in basketball, so we'll, we got to get you where we can. Yeah. So anybody who's watching the, this podcast, I guess, you know, if they want to, they could, you know, check the score, follow the score. There are going to be a whole lot of college games going on. So many conferences are shut down anyway. But now I just created hopefully some interest between the Jayhawk fans and the, and the I'm not going to say, you know, those Iowa State people. <laughs> <laughs> the Iowa State University. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> now, hopefully folks will, you know, give us some feedback if they see it again. But, but thanks for coming on the podcast and sharing the insight. And, again, being my reporter in the field, uh, being able to tell us what's going on, I really appreciate it. Best of luck to you and Cal's Kingsley and the stuff you're doing, you know, over the next few months. And I'll, I'll probably have you back on before the first of the year anyway. But thanks for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate it. Yeah, happy to do it. Thanks for having me. I look forward to coming back soon. Absolutely. Thanks, man. Bye. Again, a great conversation with Brian Rooney. I really enjoyed him joining us, the Vice President of Callis Kingsley. Uh, just a great conversation. And he's agreed that if he sees things that are happening out in the world, he's going to get in touch with me and tell me about it. We'll do more podcasts, which reminds me, if you things, see things out in the world and you want to get in touch with me, Two ways to do it. One, send me an email, scosta, S-C-O-S-T-A at N-A-D.org. Love to hear from you via email. Or look, got my phone. Go ahead and give me a phone call, area code 314-812-5311. Give me a call. We can talk if you've got story ideas, things you want to comment about the podcast or TED Magazine, tedmag.com, Lighted, our e-newsletters, whatever it is. Please get in touch with me. I'd love to, love to hear from you. Before I go, though, I do also want to talk about the NEAD Market Data Program. The Market Data Program is a service where electrical distributors submit confidential, anonymous, monthly point-of-sales data. Users are then able to see the market values by region, product, or customer type. Users are only able to see the aggregated market data when there is enough data flowing into the system to maintain anonymity. 
The market data program recently hit a milestone. It's now displaying its first state data for Illinois, North Carolina, and Virginia, and more data is expected soon as more distributors are submitting their data. Again, you can find out a whole lot more about the market data program by heading over to the NAD website, nad.org slash market hyphen data to get everything you need to know about the market data program. Thanks for listening to the Distributed with Ted Magazine podcast. We'll catch you again next time.